sometimes you just can't believe the things your eyes see so much injustice in this life and it's happening right on your tv screen so you drop to your knees and you're praying because you can hear him saying he can't breathe and it's all so overwhelming because you know there's nothing you can do to help welcome back to my channel everyone i'm so very happy that you have stuck with me for this time and will continue to stick with me as i continue on in my journey Today, this segment is going to be just about my books, um, the ones that I've read and hope to read as I continue to dive into the history of our African and Caribbean heritage. So to begin, I thought it would be amazing to start off on one of the texts that, to be honest, has really opened my eyes to things that I've never really been aware of. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to dive in with that one. Uh, the author of this text is, um, I'm just going to have to read it because it's an African name, so it's a little bit difficult to pronounce. So, Nunguki Wa Siongo. Oh my gosh, a phenomenal writer, okay? Let me just start off by saying he is fantastic. Fantastic. The way he takes literature and changes it and molds it and makes you realize how illogical some of the aspects of it is. He is just amazing. If anybody wants to dive into African literature, please, oh please, oh please begin with him because he is just so fantastic and I will always, always, always root for him. I'm a fat girl for him. Like, he's just amazing in the literature world of, like, staying woke in Africa. So currently, I have five of his books, but I've only read uh, two out of the five. So I'm going to review the two and then just give you a little brief summary of the other ones. So at least if you are interested and you've read the other two that I'm going to be talking about, you can get ahead of me and begin reading the other text. So the first text I want to introduce is Devil on the Cross. This text I read this year and whoa, <laughs> it was amazing. Like I initially bought this book after I read his first book and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to just keep reading him. And this year I had a course that needed us to read his text. So I was like, yes, I can't wait, I can't wait. And like, I literally, it was basically worth the wait. Like. This is a small page text. It goes up to 292. So there's 292 pages of pure gold, okay? I have never been so enchanted by a text in my entire life. And this is Lucky. I guess she's introducing herself finally. She is my kitten that I was mentioning earlier. So the amazing thing about Devil on the Cross is that it's about um, neoliberalism and neocolonialism and basically how the, I would say the Kenyan um, group of Africans had to definitely endure the impacts of not only the European oppressors coming and impressing, oppressing their land after um, after they fought for independence, but it's also about how the African people also um, basically oppress their own people through wealth and greed and helping the white oppressor. And what I really like about this text and most of his texts is that they are satires. So it basically makes fun of the system in order for you to basically understand like the impacts of the system. And what I really like about this text is that the focus is through a woman's perspective. So by the end of the text, as a woman reading it, you feel really empowered to know that even though you do end up with hardships, the good thing about like moving forward is that you have the strength within you and you just have to realize it. Once you realize it, you're unstoppable. And like, that's what I've been realizing slowly but surely, that the power is within me and I'm the only one that can either make or break my future. Nobody else has that power. No matter what they put in front of me to block me those obstacles, it's not gonna stop me as long as I am able to adapt and re-get over all of the things that they are pushing in my way. And honestly, I am because I'm not gonna let them stop me. Never will I. Ever. So the book I'm referring to is Wizard of the Crow. 
this text is very 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 lengthy and again it is a satire but the good thing about this text is it talks about the uh african dictatorships and how oppressive it can be to their people and also touches on how the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. What I really like about this text is it basically focuses on a man uh, who is basically facing similar hardships uh, that you experience in everyday life. He's looking for a job, trying to find a house and things like that after he came out of university. The only thing in Africa is when you have that university degree, it doesn't actually mean as much as they expected and it's basically the story about his hardships after uh like getting a graduation certificate and again it basically talks about his journey on his th his way through um the oppressiveness of uh the people who have abused him and what i really like about this text is these people that are abusing him end up meeting him in the further aspects of the text and he is a fireball. <laughs> if you have the time and if you can commit, I would 100% recommend because this book is pure gold. Like even what they do and how they respond to the political climate, it's just so phenomenal. And you wouldn't even think about like ways that you can actually counteract depression if you don't read these things because it's not only us in Canada and us in America that are feeling it. It's us everywhere, in Africa, in different parts of the uh, world where black people are but still not accepted. It's everywhere. And what this text does is it centralizes it so everybody anywhere can feel like they belong in that story, whether it is the Europeans, whether it is African people. It's just a really good text that covers a whole, like, it's just it's it's full of life and i really enjoyed it i read it twice and i enjoyed it the second time and i will continue to keep reading it so that i'm always aware of what's going on and because it's a really good read even if you read it multiple times it's not that bad because the more you read it the more you actually can pinpoint and take out things that the author wants you to see but you probably wouldn't have gotten the first time because you're just reading it through so i really really enjoyed it so now that I talked to you about the two books that I did enjoy reading, I do want to talk about the text that I purchased but haven't yet had an opportunity to read it while I was um, taking over my uh, English degree. So the three other texts by him are The River Between, um, oh it just says The River Between. This one is a pretty good book. It's on two neighboring mountain ridges in Kenya, during the early days of white settlement, the, K the Kuyu people are torn between those who are, um, who are drawn to the newcomers' fiery Christianity and those who hold fast to their people's magical customs. In the midst of this uh, disunity stands Waika, a young leader born to a line of prophets who struggles to educate the tribe, a task he seeks as the only way to bring the two factions together, but tragedy and star-crossed love threaten his survival and his people in this revolutionary novel that charts a path between those who fear the unknown and those who see beyond it. Already just reading the title or the um, summary, I'm already captivated and I think I want to read this next. Like, I really do like texts that talk about the tensions because honestly, as I've grown up, I've realized that the tensions are there, but we don't address it. So when he's opening up and actually being aware of the tensions and what brought us to the separation and the divide, it makes me more understanding and more compassionate for my people because we've been through a lot. So I really do want to see more about uh, what he has to say. The next text is Weep Not My Child. And um, already this this book sounds amazing. It just sounds like you're about to like uh, help the child, like the next generation grow and you're gonna like help mentor them. When it says weep not, I'm thinking like the child is crying. So you're there to support them and comfort them. Let's see what the back says. So it says two brothers, Najorgoj and Kamu, stand on a garbage heap and look into their futures. Najorj is to attend school while Kamu will train to be a carpenter. 
but this is Kenya, and the times are against them. In the forest, the Mau Mau is waging war against the white government, and the two brothers and their family need to decide where their loyalties lie. For the political Kamu, the choice is simple, but for Najorj, the scholar, the dream of progress through learning is a hard one to give up. First published in 1964, Weep Not My Child is a moving novel about the effects of the infamous Mao Mao uprising on the lives of ordinary men and women and on one family in particular. So this text actually seems really interesting as this text is most is I would say a piggyback off of this one from my I like my knowledge of reading um, Devil on the Cross because this is about the Mao Mao um, revolution but this one is actually after the Mao Mao revolution where the main character actually fought in that war and the after effects about it so I would say if you read this one follow it up with this one to see the before and after effects of the war that they were fighting for independence. The next text I um, have by Nagungi is A Grain of Wheat. And again, I'm not too sure what this has to offer, but because I've already read like three of his like back like summaries and two of his books, like I actually think that this will probably be amazing. So set in the wake of the Mau Mau Rebellion and on the cusps of Kenya's independence from Britain, a grain of wheat follows up a group of villagers who live, um, whose lives have been transferred by the 1952 to 1960 um, emergency. At the center of it all is the uh, Mugu, the village's chosen hero, a man haunted by a terrible secret. As we learn of the village's tangled histories in a narrative interwoven with myth and peppered with allusions uh, to real-life leaders, including Jomo Kenyatta, a masterly story unfolds in which compromises are forced, uh, friendships are betrayed, and loves are tested. It, it seems really good. Like what I really like about Ngugi is that he focuses on the black lives in his community and because he's African and from the Kenya diaspora he focuses on their history and retelling it. And what I love about the retelling of our histories is that it's from our, it's from our perspective and not from the Europeans who have uh, written their history text and passed it down. This is the perspective of an African man who has seen and experienced all the traumas that he's writing in his text because he like he was alive through the Mao Mao uh, fighting. He was also imprisoned by uh, the dictator at the time and he is just phenomenal. He's not afraid to speak out and comment on these things and that's exactly the type of person I want to be. I don't want to be afraid to say what I have to say even if there's persecution at my front door I want to just say it and let it be there and if somebody wants to take it up and actually do something to progress go for it but for me this is my way of progressing and I feel like his writing is his way of like moving about progression so that is it. I hope you really enjoyed this uh, series today as although I was only talking about books, I hope you got a little bit of an understanding of the types of books I'm focusing on which are about uh, black history and understanding it from our perspective as opposed to those of the Europeans. So uh, hopefully uh, you'll stay tuned and hear more about my other book reviews. I'm really excited to uh, read and have you guys read the stories that have impacted me and continue to impact me as I explore and understand my history. So until then, have yourself a wonderful day and I will see you next week. For your life, fight for your whole life in the face of a society that doesn't value your life. For the men in your life, 